Hello everyone, welcome back to another video over here at Louise Petrie Arts. Today I'm going to be working on two pieces. I've got these really hefty tiles going on that are going to be finished with resin. I'm also going back to my trusty tube rig that I've used a few times, which you'll have seen in my previous videos. Here it is, all daubed in multicolored paint. Love it. So I'll take you really quickly through these paints. I've got Brunel Franklin's Lemon Yellow mixed with Chiltern Arts neon yellow then i'm using reeves lavender mixed with de la Rowney violet i've also got colvin and co gambodge which i've mixed with a neon orange crawford and black studio red mixed with chilton arts orange last but not least i have brunel franklin's crimson red mixed with deep red crawford and black there we go the recipe I'm using is the one that suits the Winsor Newton gloss medium. I'm mixing one part paint, one fifth of a part Winsor Newton gloss medium, one fifth of a part BVA glue and one part water roughly, give or take to get it to the right runny cream sort of consistency that we're looking for. So here we've got this vibrant and deep red. This one is a really deep orange. And you've got a neon orange here that blinds you. Some beautiful blue. I haven't told you what this one is. My painting partner over here has brought this lovely blue. So I'm going to give it a little whirl. We've got it right here. It's Deco Art Dazzling Metallics Ice Blue. It looks stunning. So we'll give that a whirl and see how it behaves with the paints. I have purple here. So it's a medium purple now because the Dale around me is really, really strong. And then we have a vibrant lemony neon yellow. My white is a mixture of Crawford and Black white here with the Wilco Basics brand white. I'm going to add silicon to all of my colours and I'm going to create two pieces. So I'll have the white negative space background and a black negative space background. Black that I'm using is mixed from four different black acrylics so I won't take the time to go through them. And we'll give it a whirl. I'll be adding two drops of silicon into all of the colours except the black and the white. I'll adjust the camera now and move you down. I'm just going to add my silicon which I've dispensed into this little container. My black doesn't want any. All of the other colours are going to have either one or two drips depending on if it pours out nicely for me. One, two. One. Okay, the purple has four. I'll go with one in that because it's a real small amount of blue. I've got three in the red, which is over half a cup. Two in the orange. And two in the yellow. Now, everyone says various ways about mixing your silicon, but personally I tend to mix mine for at least 30 seconds to make sure that it's really thoroughly through the paint. I think that's when I get less of the silicon puddles on top of the piece. So yeah, stir away. I won't give you the pleasure of watching me stir all of them, but just so that you get the idea that it is really thoroughly combined into the paint. Okay, so I'll leave you in that camera position for now so that I just apply this back black base and I stay in the video for a little bit longer. So I'll flood this for my negative space. I'm not going to put heat on it at this point. I'll be coming back to do that afterwards. I just want to make sure that I've got a nice fluid base because that's going to help my paints slide both over the top and underneath the layer of black to give me the effects that I'm looking for. Okay, so we'll just hopefully set that back level. I'm going to bring in my tube. I'll be working with the tube not all the way up to the edge because I think then I'm going to be able to swipe to make the initial trails look like they belong there. So I'll take it in and I'll bring it in a bit of an arc and let it trail off and see how that works. Now, because I've put down a fluid base, these paints are going to want to come straight out of the bottom of the tubes. 
it does work better when you leave a little bit of a gap. So we'll do that. There we are. So they're pretty much standing on their tile at this point. I've decided that I'm going to be placing black first and foremost into my central tube. And that's going to create a little bit of a gap between the streaks of colour that I'll be swiping across. I'll keep a little bit back because that will be flooded into the front of these tubes for me to bring the colours through. We'll start with some yellow straight onto the black. We're not in the central tube, but I mean it's going to hit the black base first. And I'll bring a bit into the far tube. And I'll just continue in this way to lay my paints in. We have got way more than enough paint there. So I'll bring blacks just in front of these massive pools of colour. I'll now adjust the camera and shift all of the paints out of the way before I throw them on myself. So I just want to slightly lift these, but not enough to allow all of the paints out. Okay. So I'll bring these points Oh wow, there's some really pretty things already. Just my breath is enough for the cells to be popping up. I'm not getting much of the blue vibe, so I'll probably add a little bit of that at this point. I've got one gorgeous cell here that's popped in blue. It's just got a blue ring in a red centre. So gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to take my little swiper and just make these areas look more like they belong. Maybe. <laughs> oh wow, there is some real gorgeous colour lurking under there. I'd like to leave that bit and just get the heat gun to pop these red cells up for me. We'll leave that one. We'll see how to bring these over. I'll just deliberately bring some of the black atop the yellow because when it begins to sink, being the heavier colour, I should get some cells. There we are. I'll take this solid yellowy orange and just drag it out okay so I'm going to move it a tiny bit and then I'll use the heat gun move it a tiny bit more and bring in the blowtorch I'll just work now to move the paints slowly Trying to think what jumper I'm wearing and if I'd like paint to be dripping all over my sleeve. That's a no. <laughs> Before I move this further, fresh eyes on it already, I'm going to put some black here. So I will even out this paint and bring in the heat gun. That's enough movement. My heat gun now is going to bring my paint up and around a little bit. 
So I'm going to bring a little bit of the black onto this area and then continue to take it across. Okay, so at this point, I'm not too impressed with the way it's sitting here. So I would like to encourage it to go further. I have another technique for laying down the paint, which I'm going to use to make it look like a wave. And it just isn't going as far for me. It's going to muddy if I use the heat gun to do that. So I'll just block up this thing and pour the paint down here. That's his technical name, this thing. There we have it. <laughs> this is where I stand to kill the piece. Okie dokie, so I'm going to cover this end and remove my hand from this end as I drag it across the piece. Give you a look, see? Oh yeah, I like that. And then I think this orange needs to spread out and dominate a little bit more you see the blue it's all disappeared I wouldn't say there's any blue in this piece anymore except here okay so I'll just stand you back up give it a little bit more manipulation with the heat and see how it goes There are one or two areas where it's slightly muddy, but they can be improved just by coming along and making them wispy. Like this orange here, it can be expanded on. And by placing a little bit of colour onto your stick as well, you can layer effectively in that way just to then drag it over the surface of the other colours here
Okay, so I've been away for a little while. I was just seeing my guest off and I've had a chance to evaluate this piece. Now I have decided this is a baby elephant. With it's head tilted upwards and its trunk here, reaching to its mum's trunk, which will be on the white piece, that will match up. I love it. So I'm just going to give it a slightly fatter neck. I'm going to give one small swipe across here to create more definition in the trunk area. I'm going to bring you down and show you this piece and cover up all of my paints to continue tomorrow. So this is quite a hefty video in itself so I'm going to release this one and then if you want to see them side by side with the ba baby elephant holding out, reaching up its trunk to the mummy elephant on this side, then you'll have to join me for my next video. I'll bring you down now and give you a quick close up. Does it say elephant to you? It sure does say elephant to me. I think I should probably have done something to this this bit here. It's slightly the wrong shape for me. But as I said, part of my technique where I produce a piece from a paw, a painted piece, I can see it and I enhance what's already there. I'll use black paint to bring out and erase certain sections. Let me give you a little look. Oh, look at the pretty elephant. Do you see it? Please let me know in the comments. Do you see the elephant kind of reaching its trunk? The trunk could do with being a little bit more shapely in that very top part there. So I'll perhaps do that. Maybe curved out slightly here. Because it's a bit of a rigid angle that. The other than small tweaks, I think we really have got the beginning of an amazing piece here. So there we have it. I've come along and created a lovely piece. I cannot wait for this to be dry for me to be able to tweak it. I'll be back to make the mummy elephant. So if you'd like to see that, watch my next video. Thank you all for watching. Take care. Bye bye now.